My name is Tom Northrup. I work as a solution specialist. Basically, my, my day is providing technical support to the end users for our software. Um, my average day begins with um, running a ticket system where I come in, I look at the calls, I look at the emails that have been sent in, uh, assign tickets off to technicians um, for them to resolve, take some tickets myself, and then move through um, responding to them. Uh, most of my day is spent on the phone or writing emails communicating to uh, end users of the software. Um, the other part of my day that's not spent doing that is spent on uh, product development. So I, I sort of have meetings and discuss the future of the product from the technical aspect. So um, how's the product going to sit on a network? Where is it going to be housed? What kind of databases is it going to function off of? And um, how are we going to deliver that to the end user? I would describe the qualifications for this job to uh, um, begin with a bachelor's degree. Uh, while it's not a requirement for most entry-level help desk technicians um, to sort of in, ensure the interview, a bachelor's degree will, will do that for you. Um, bachelor's degree in any sort of information-focused um, field would be helpful. Uh, mine is in uh, interdisciplinary information technology with a networking specialty. so. I had a wide range of exposure to uh, information technology. Um, there are other information technology degrees, computer science, um, general information technology, and um, there's a, a business-oriented one called management information systems. That's more of a business focus and less of a technical focus. You do get technical exposure, but more of that's focused on how does the business manage their information, where do they place it, how do they move it around, and how do they work with the IT department to manage that information. So um, for my position with uh, product development, software development, m the strong information technology degree would be helpful. Um, there's no certifications required, but as you move up and through, I'm sort of up to level two now, that would look to a certification of some sort. I, uh, I attended a certification for a Microsoft Certified Systems Analyst, and that's the MCSA with an S plus, and that's a security plus. And these are different certifications that can come from Microsoft, can come from any local uh, um, technology school. And uh, while they don't guarantee a position, they can definitely help um, provide the interview for that position. Uh, master's degree is where you would most likely focus on a specialty. I work for a healthcare organization, and so my, my master's degree, I plan to uh, look at uh, health information technology. And um, that's the basic qualifications. Um, a lot of customer service oriented type stuff, so um, perhaps uh, uh, you know, speaking courses or exposure to uh, verbal communication and written communication would be helpful as well. The best part about my job is I get to use the, the, the skills that I enjoy using the most. Uh, I'm a problem solver at heart and I love uh, word puzzles and problem puzzles and that kind of stuff. So um, every day at work I'm just problem solving, I'm troubleshooting, I'm analyzing, um, really working on design and engineering, um, flows of processes and systems, how, does, how, does, how do we get from point A to point B and then how do I guide someone else to get from point A to point B and I really enjoy doing that kind of stuff and I get to do that every day. My day is full of problem solving. Um, and that's the best part about my job. I get to do what I love. Uh, the worst part about my job is that the pace. The pace is very high and very fast. The expectations are um, higher than we would like it sometimes. And um, the comprehension of what we do is very limited. Uh, we work in a field that's considered a specialty. And so the decision makers usually have very limited exposure to our field. They use it every day, they use computers every day, but that's about as far as it goes. So um, it becomes difficult at times to communicate what, what we need and how we're going to use what we use to um, achieve business goals. Uh, so that would be the worst part is that uh, managing those expectations of our users, managing expectations of um, business leaders that, um, that make decisions and, and um, and we're, I, most likely the difficulty I have is that I, uh, I am customer service oriented. I enjoy 
having a yes for everybody. But in our field, we don't always have a yes, and so we have to learn how to uh, say no um, correctly. My final advice would um, sort of want to focus on customer service. That was the big surprise for me. Uh, I learned technology. I thought I was getting away from customer service by moving into a technology field. Um, my previous experiences was with waiting tables and, um, and those kind of working at a call center. And um, I was hoping I was moving away from customer service. However, um, the information technology field is moving into this new age where we have to be customer oriented. We have to be better communicators, better verbal communicators, better written communicators. Um, and that was a real surprise to me. Um, I see on a regular basis where individuals and the, the ones I interact with, because I interact with many organizations and their information technology departments and um, and I'm really surprised at the lack of communication skills and then their desire to learn them of that would really help me if I could explain this better if I could um, you know have more time with my users I could uh, provide better support that kind of stuff is really what the future is about for information technologists is how do we become better communicators how do we understand and explain the systems that we work on instead of being set in one area no longer can we have one individual just working on code and sitting in a dark room and then another individual developing the network and another individual it's just our times don't allow for that we need someone who can do a little bit of everything and then can dig deeper into where they're needed when they're needed um, so being a little more versatile, having a wider range of skills is going to be more valuable than being an expert in one area. If you're an expert in one area, you can do well at whatever one job that is. But if you have a wide range of skills, when that one job goes away, I can place someone somewhere else if they have the skill set for it. So the biggest advice would be not to pigeonhole ourselves, but to pick a field like information technology and learn the range of it and then bring your personality to it. And I think that would be the best advice. That's what's gotten me far where I am, and um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you.